good if you have your Bibles this morning. Turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. I'm going to preach this message in a, in a way I probably ain't preached before. Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26 through verse 38. Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26 through 38. Right there. I'm going to talk to you this morning about being a vessel that God can use. Because Mary and Joseph were vessels that God used. Hello, I've preached this billions of times of this passage of Scripture. And, but I've never preached it this way. And let's read right here. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly flavored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salvation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in the womb, and shall bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the thorn of his throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth shall also conceive a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This morning, I want to speak to you on the thought of being that vessel that God can use. Heavenly Father, we come before you, dear Lord, today, dear God. Lord, and we honor you, dear God, today, Lord. We lift you up, dear God, and we exalt you, dear God, today, Father. Lord, today we give you glory, God, and we give you praise, and we give you adoration, O God. Lord, today we exalt you, Lord, and we pray for your hand, Lord, to be upon me. Give me the words you would have me to speak, O Lord, this morning, God. Lord, let your anointing flow through this sanctuary today, Father. We lift you up, dear God, and we exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I start out this morning by simply making this statement that God works through human beings. Did you hear me? You can read through the Bible and find out that God works through people. The Almighty, the all-powerful God uses us mere humans to accomplish His work, to fulfill His work, if you will. You see, one of those great examples of God working is right here, found in the Christmas story in Luke chapter 1 if you will, how God would use a virgin to bring forth the Messiah into the world to save people from their sin. You can go back even into the book of Genesis and begin to see how God had prophesied, had told the devil, if you will, that God, he would use the seed of a woman. In Genesis 3 and 15, and I will put into me between thee and thy woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it, sh and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Think about that statement for a minute, how it had to confuse the devil. 
Most of the time, the seed comes from a man. But God said, this time, the seed's coming from a woman. What was that pinpointing to? Pinpointing to the virgin birth of Jesus Christ right there. And how God would use a woman to bring forth the Messiah into the world, if you will. In order for God to do this, you know what he needed? He needed a woman. Hello. He needed a vessel, if you will. And right here in the New Testament, we see that God had that woman. It was Mary. It was Mary that he came to to fulfill that promise that had been given some times back. That promise that was already brought forth in the Old Testament. But I want to remind you this day also that God also used Joseph as well. I'll start, I'll remind you of this statement and I'll get into it a little more. Many times we think Joseph played a lesser role. But Joseph's role was just as important as any other role in this situation. His work was just as important as well, if you will. You need to think about that today because I'm simply saying, everybody that does something for God, their work is important. Hello? So what are you saying today, preacher? I'm saying that God's looking for some people this day that He can use to accomplish His work in this hour that we are living You see, it's God who chooses the people that He uses. It's God who picks these people out. It's God who does the calling, not man. It's God who sets people in the place of authority. It's God who gives people favor. It's God who opens the doors. It's God who closes the doors this morning. You see, some people are looking to be in a place of position, if you will. But I want you to know today that God chooses the vessel that He wants to use to accomplish His purpose. There's a lot of people that want a position just to have a position, if you will. There's a lot of people that want to have a title to just have a title, if you will. Now, there may be some that may want it for legitimate reasons, But if you don't want, you're not called, you don't need to have it. Hello? You see, some people want to be used by God just because they want to feel power. They want to feel like they're empowered, if you will. Some people want to be used from God because they want to feel important, if you will. Some people want to have that position of leadership Some people want to be lifted up, if you will, because they feel like they can do it better than someone else. I love those type of people. I'm just going to tell you, if God thought you could do it better, He didn't, He would have put you there. Hello. Hello. But the reality is, there's a lot of people that want to be used by God, but they can't, they ain't called to that position. Some people are jealous because God uses other people and not them. I've told people before, I'm not jealous of somebody that sits in state offices or international offices because they got more to bear than I do. Amen? God put them there. God placed them there. God is using them there. You see, a lot of people think, well, I should have this, I should have that. No, no. You need to understand this, that God chooses and God appoints and God places the people where they need to be at in that season. You see, it's God that does the calling, not man. It's not God that brings, puts, calls people to accomplish His will. It's God who assigns the task, if you will. You can look at the story of Mary and you can find out that Mary did not go looking for it. But God came looking for her. Did you hear me? You see that right there? Mary did not go looking to be the one that God used even though prophecy had told about a virgin to give birth. 
And no doubt it was known during that time what God had spoken. No doubt they had heard it and they had heard it and they raised it that a prophecy of a virgin. But Mary did not go looking to bring me the one that God selected, but instead God sent the angel Gabriel to bring forth the word to her and to tell her that she has been called. Um, What are you telling, preacher? Um, I'm telling you simply this morning um, that you don't have to go trying to knock the doors down. You don't try to have to go look for position that when God calls you, he'll come knocking for you. Uh, Did you hear me this morning? Uh, When God appoints you, uh, he'll come knocking for you this morning. Um, How do we know we look at Gabriel um, as he came to Mary um, and said, listen what he said to her. Um, His message with her was simply um, in verse 28 through 31. um, And the angel came in unto her and and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her into her mind. What manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Did you hear me right there? There was God's messenger, the messenger angel Gabriel, if you will, the word bearing angel that came unto Mary and told her that she was the one that was chosen. She was the one that God had selected for this task. She was the one that was called to to bring forth uh, the Messiah into the world. Uh, do you get what I'm telling you this morning? Um, some of you need to understand that God, you don't need to go knocking uh, when God for God to use you. When God's ready to use you, uh, He'll come knocking for you. Did you hear me? Uh, when God's ready to use you or send you on a test, uh, He'll come knocking on your door. Did you hear what I'm telling you this morning? Uh, you don't have to go running around. Uh, you don't have to go Locking, uh, trying to knock your own doors and wanting position just because wanting position when God's ready to exalt you uh, when God's ready to lift you up uh, and put you in that place of leadership can I tell you uh, they'll come looking for you this morning amen uh, listen today um, let me tell you um, every time I moved from a church uh, it was always that God came looking for me um, yeah they were times in, down in Robin Uh, that I would try to knock doors down uh, but those doors would not open Uh, it wasn't until God came knocking for me if you will uh, that God would send me uh, on my task and sit me up here for this season that I am in right now Uh, you see no doubt when you are called of God uh, just like Mary right here you're highly favored of God Uh, you see Mary was highly favored uh, because God had chosen in her. You see, no matter what you do for the kingdom of God today, no matter what you do about bringing forth the hand of work of God, can I tell you you're favored this morning. You're highly favored by God. Even if it's just doing something simple. Even if it's just doing something that may be unseen. Can I tell you this morning that when you're doing the call of God to do even do the smallest details and do the smallest work, Can I tell you, God says you're highly favored this morning. Amen? There ain't no greater call than the call of God inside of your life. There ain't no greater call than what God has called you to do. I remember what Jimmy Swaggart said. He said, somebody said, why don't you run for president? And Brother Jimmy's reply was, because I'd have to take a step down. He said, because I got the highest calling in the land. And that's to work for God this morning. You see Mary right here. She was highly favored. You think about all the young ladies, the Israelite ladies, maidens, that had aspired to be in her position, if you will. Think about, and she was the one that was highly favored. They knew the prophecies. There was other young ladies that knew the 
prophecies of a coming redeemer. They knew that Isaiah prophesied. Therefore the Lord himself shall, shall give you a sign. Behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and he you shall call his name Emmanuel. For those that don't know what Emmanuel means, it simply means God with us. In other words, Mary would call, would bring forth the incarnate Son of God, the Word of God, if you will. Now let me straighten this out. Mary was never the mother of God. Jesus was God, but she was never the mother of God. She was the mother of the incarnate Word of God. God don't have no beginning. He didn't have no ending. God, Jesus coming was God put into the flesh. Amen? Amen? Let's get that out of the way. God was always there. Jesus was always there. But what Mary covered was the incarnate Word of God. John chapter 1. Hello? Second of all, Mary didn't remain a virgin because Jesus had half sisters and brothers after that. Hello? She ain't meant to be worshipped, but she did have a call. She should be honored, just like Joseph, for what they done to the work, for the work of God. You see, Mary called herself the handmaiden of the Lord. In other words, Mary was saying she was a bond servant, slave, if you will. In other words, she was saying, I'm giving myself to the work of God. I want you to think about this. She was giving herself to do the will of God. She was giving herself to do what God had called her to do. In other words, Mary says, I'm totally surrendered to do what you called me to do. She would be willing to serve obediently, completely obediently. We also see that in Joseph. Now, we know what Joseph went through. I mentioned a little bit last week about a little bit what Joseph had went through. You know, if a woman come told you, your wife come told you one year in spouse say, that you're pregnant, that they're pregnant. You go, what you going to say? Who's the daddy? Hello? In this term, you're going to be saying, we want a DNA test. <laughs> Mama's baby's daddy's baby. <laughs> Listen, I'm just telling you what the terms in today's terms would be. But you know, the angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream. And told him, this is miraculous. She ain't been with a man. This is a miracle birth. She's been called to bring forth the Son of God into this world. She's been, bring forth, she's been called to carry the Word. I get, I get so aggravated with some of these people that don't believe in women preachers. If a woman can carry him into this world, why come she can't carry it right here either? Hey, man. Hey, man. You just think about that. But listen, she was willing to do the work of God. She was willing to serve God, no matter what other people said. Because I guarantee you, if it'd be like in our culture, and this would have happened in their time, they would have been talk. Hello? They'd have been talk. Hello? If it'd been in their time, it would have been a grapevine. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? The gossip would have went on. I guarantee you it was some gossip going on about her. Hello? They heard about that. Some people didn't believe it. But guess what? She was highly chosen of God. Hello? She was highly favored of God. She said, no matter what you say about me, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm going to be fully surrendered to God, totally obedient to God. Not only that, we see that in Joseph as well. To raise a child that was not his own. To raise Jesus as he, it was his. To stand by Mary and to lead them along the way. You see, what I'm trying to tell you this day is, it was God who chose Mary to bring Jesus into this world. It was God who chose Joseph to raise Jesus as a child, if you will. It was God who does the appointment. It's God who does the calling. It's God who calls the individual today for his service. Think about what he told the prophet Jeremiah. He said, before you were born, he said, I already had a plan for you. How many know that God already had a plan for J Jeremiah? He had ordained him to be a prophet.
How many know with Elizabeth right here? How many know God had a plan for John the Baptist? He was the forerunner of Christ. After all, the Bible tells us that John the Baptist was baptized in the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. I can imagine what Elizabeth was going through. A little bit of kicking, a little bit of shouting as old John was getting excited in that womb. Amen? Did you hear me today? I don't know, but I'll just give you a little Jimmy thought right there. But what I'm trying to tell you is it was God who done the chosen. It was God who chose John the Revelator out of the other disciples who saw the things that were coming in the end time. Even though he had been born, he had been blinded, he was still saw that which God said he would see the book of Revelation. What you saying this morning, preacher? I'm telling you today, it's God who calls. It's God who lifts up. It's God who's in, who puts you in that place of leadership. It's God who's going to lead you where he needs you to go and call you to the task that he has called you to. Look at the story of Mary and Joseph and see that God's choosing of these individuals right here to fulfill his purpose. See, I, as a pastor, I'm credentialed in the church of God. I'm a credentialed licensed minister in the church of God. I don't work for you. I work for God. Hello? I work for God. He's my boss. He's my ultimate boss. Yeah, there's certain things if I do wrong, I can be stripped of my license. Certain things, if I don't do my reports or Patty don't do her reports every month, I lose license. That's just the way it is. But ultimately, I tell people I work for God in the long run. Now, the church of God don't come in here handling me and everything like that. Thank God. There's certain things I got to do to keep my ministerial license. But, you know, if I didn't have a ministerial license, I st being called is my license. Being called by God is the ultimate calling right there. You see, that's the greatest responsibility as a preacher that I have is to God. Amen? To do as God asked me to do. See, yes, I develop friendships. Yes, they're in places that I've been. Yes, I get used to being somewhere. But those things can never neglect the call of God upon your life. Those things are secondary. Did you hear me? Compared to the call of God. Because God is first priority. Hello. A lot of people don't understand that this morning. Hey man, I'm going to get into something here in a little bit. But you've got to understand the call of God's prioritized. If you got called to go somewhere today, God called you to go somewhere. Hey man. God calls you to a test. you got an obligation to that task. If you don't do what you're going to answer for, hey man. Hello? Hello? You can't say, well, I just didn't want to pack up and go. I just didn't want to leave this person behind. What kind of excuse is God going to give you that day? What are you going to give to God? God's going to say, it doesn't matter. I called you. Amen? I called you. I called you. I called you. Well, I just didn't have time to do it, but God said, I called you. I just didn't want to do it. God says, I called you. See, there's going to be a lot of people going to have to answer for the call of God on their life that never took a first step out of the call of God. Hello? Hello? There's going to be a lot of people that are going to have to answer for the call of God that they never done one thing for God. See, today, you got to understand the call of God's important. It's the greatest priority in your life. you got to, when God calls... That's got to be your priority. And that's what it was with Mary and Joseph. God's call was their priority. What you mean? 
You can't get distracted by people. Because I about guarantee you, you can't get distracted by critics. And you can't get distracted by the toughness of the task. You know what it means? You got to keep going with the call of God. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, I about guarantee you, they were people that mocked Mary and Joseph in that time. Just knowing the nature of people. Hello? I about guarantee you they were, it got tough a little bit along the way. But they had to keep going, didn't they? You read the story and you'll see the toughness it was. You, you understand that they had a task to do. They had a responsibility that God had called them to do. They couldn't let people distract them. They couldn't let naysayers distract them. Guess what they had to do? They had to keep marching on with the calling of God in their life. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, you can't get distracted by people. People will try to distract you from the call of God. You can't get distracted by critics. I love critics. Those, arm, those armchair quarterbacks, you know what I'm talking about. Those people that never threw a football in their life trying to tell a quarterback how to throw. Hey, man. Hey, man. I know watching the Cowboys. There's times I'd like to tell them what to do. At times I get at that TV, but I've never been a quarterback. I said if I was the coach, but I've never been a coach. I couldn't tell you one thing. I tell them just get out there and play <laughs> and do it right. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, an armchair quarterback. Anybody know what I'm talking about with an armchair quarterback? Or somebody in the driver's seat trying to tell you how to drive. The passenger seat telling you in the driver's seat how to drive. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody that may have never done anything, drove in their life. Somebody that may never throw a court ball in their life, trying to tell you how to throw a ball. <laughs> trying to give you direction how to throw a ball. Excuse me. Throw that out the way. Unless you've done it, you don't need to be telling me. Hey, man, don't pay attention to those critics because you've got a lot of those or those... Uh, those quarterbacks that's sitting in the chair that ain't never been on a football field in their life. They think about what they would do, what they would do. You ain't going to do nothing. You'd be, in my, you'd be in your shoes, they'd probably do the same thing you do. Amen? But you can't get distracted by that. You can't be distracted by everything that's going on. You've got to follow the calling of God. And Mary and Joseph, despite... Maybe those that didn't believe because I guarantee you there were some that around them that mocked them, didn't believe, but guess what? They kept on anyway. Amen? Amen? They kept marching forth anyway. That's what I'm trying to tell you today, that when God calls you, don't you get distracted by what other people's got to say because other people ain't in your position. As a pastor, let me tell you, I'm going to just tell you right here, Right now, real quick, if you've never been pastoring before or preaching, you don't need to be telling me how to preach. Hello? You may want to, but I'm going to just lap you off because you don't know what you're talking about. I remember I got a dose of it. I remember before I was saved down at Iron Station, I used to say a preacher's got the easiest job in the world. I used to mock and say, yeah, when they did Pastor Appreciation Day. See, I could do that. And I get all these gifts and I had to do nothing. Boy, didn't I get fooled. <laughs> didn't God give me a dose of reality? <laughs> hey, man, you better be careful what you say. Hey, man. <laughs> Boy, I got a dose of it. God showed me it was more than what I thought it was. <laughs> that was where I was saved by right now. I'll tell you, 
you ain't never done it, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't know the responsibility. Somebody that ain't never done it don't need to be telling somebody how to pastor. Hello. Somebody that ain't never preached don't need to be telling somebody how to preach. Somebody that can't be, don't know anything about carpentry don't need to be telling somebody how to build, build a house, do they? That'd be like Ashley. Yeah, I'm right there in his carpenter be somebody don't have no never built a thing in their life. Couldn't tell you what a two by four was, come try to tell you to build a, how to build a house. What you gonna do at them? You're gonna laugh at them, ain't you? <laughs> you ain't gonna take no advice from that, are you? Uh uh-uh. uh. Somebody don't know how to do it. They ain't never done it. You ain't gonna listen to them, are you? Amen. You can't get distracted by people. Because there's a lot of people tell you what you need to do. You can't listen to what other people's got to say. You got to hear what heaven's got to say this morning. You got to hear what God's got to say about it this morning. You see, God's got a calling. Let me tell you, I'm still learning this thing. And I'll keep learning this thing. No matter where my feet may tread. Let me tell you, because every time where you go, there's something different. Amen. I can tell you, there's different battles in Robbinsville than they are in Houston town. But there's still the same devil right there. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you is you've got to learn to lean on heaven and trust the Word of God. Amen. Let me tell you, Mary and Joseph had to trust the Word of God to fulfill the calling of God upon their life. Think about Mary. Just think about it. What people said, the clatter, the talk that was going on when she told people that she was pregnant. Folks, it's not hard to hide that you're pregnant after a while. It's not. Even Joseph for a while was going to put her away privately. You know, a woman could have been stoned to death. She could have been stoned to death in public over that. But Joseph was a just man. Shows you what kind of man Joseph was. Anyway, he wasn't going to do it in public. He was going to do it in private. Listen to the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. See, but I'm going to tell you, they had a heavy task. The calling of God's never easy upon somebody's life. The calling of God, this responsibility that they had was not something easy to take over. Anytime you do God's calling, God's work, it's never an easy thing. But I can tell you that God will equip you to fulfill the task that is at hand. In other words, God will direct your steps. God will lead you the way He wants you to go. In fact, Psalms 37, verses 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He delighteth in His way. Do we know that God directed their steps? Yes, we do. How many know there was an evil king that wanted to heard that there was another king born that wanted to put all the male children to death? Well, let's read, read right here. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, let's see what God, how God led them. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Notice the angel of the Lord told him to go and say, Stay there until I send for you. When he arose, he took the young child and the mother by night and departed into Egypt. And there was there unto the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Let me tell you what we begin to see right there. We see that we see danger arising for this young child. We see even Satan had begun to try to kill this child, even as a babe, Jesus as a babe. But the angel of God appeared to him. God sent word for Mary and Joseph that they needed to flee into Egypt until they were told otherwise. But you know what? God told them. But guess what they had to do? They had to put the legs together and do it. 
Hello. God can lead you all day, but you got to follow it. You got to be willing to walk. Did you hear me? It was Joseph and Mary that had to do the walking. God didn't walk for them, if you will. Let me give you an example. Somebody could tell me to walk right now, lead me right here, get up and go. This place be something be going on. You need to get up and go. And if I stay here, guess what? I'm going to find myself in a mess. If they would have stayed there, Herod would have been after that Jesus. But when the angel of God told them to leave, guess what Joseph did? And Mary, they had to get up and they had to begin to walk. They had to begin to walk. Hello, God can lead you all day. But you got to be able, you got to be willing to walk. Did you hear what I'm telling you this morning? Hello, God can lead you all day. He can direct your steps, but you got to be willing to put your foot out and start walking. I get amazed. God's called me, God's called me, but you ain't walking. God's leading me, God's leading me, but you ain't walking. Let me tell you, God opens the door, He expects you to walk through it. A lot of people don't want to walk. They want the thought of being called by God. They want the prestige of being called by God. They want the glory of being called by God. They want the honor of being called by God, but they don't want to walk. It's like they want, I'm not going to try this. It's like they want God to pick them up and carry them. Mary and Joseph had to go on a journey and follow his leading. I'm going to tell you something. You bark. I'm going to show you right here. This is why churches get stuck. That's why preachers get in ruts. Because they're not willing to walk where God walks them to walk. Hello. I'm convinced of this. I've seen this many times. I've seen this happen many times. Churches don't move forward because they're not willing to go where God told them to go. You're going to hear me get into it. They want to keep everything in the static, the status quo, because we're comfortable. But I'm going to tell you straight up right now, you hear me. I'm preaching from God. I know this is a word from God this morning. I know without a shadow of a doubt this is a word from God. I've never preached this like this in my life. But I'll tell you right now, the reason people ain't seeing the glory is because they're not willing to go where God wants them to go. They want to stay camped in the same old, same old. I'm going to show you something right here in a minute. You're not, you don't want them to move forward. The cloud could be gone. And you could still be in the same old place. God expects you to, when the cloud moves, when the glory moves, you got to move. If you stay pitched, you're going to, in the camp, you keep your camp, when God's already moved, guess what's going to hold? You ain't going to see the glory. Amen? Amen? You don't go when God tells you to go. You ain't going to experience the glory of God. Amen. If you don't move when God tells you to move, you ain't going to experience the glory of God. Hello, how do you know this? Because in Exodus, how many know the story in Exodus? Last chapter in Exodus. Exodus chapter 40. For exact. 40 verses 34 through 38. I'm really going to get into this because... I'm telling you, the church likes the status quo. 
The people of God like to be comfortable. We like things to continue as they is. Let me get you some of that expression if. We want to continue as they is. But God wants sometimes the glory of God moves for you to move. The glory of God don't stay in one place at one time. You're going to see this. Here's how Israel had to be led in the wilderness. Verse 34, 34 through 38, Exodus 40. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Simply put, if God didn't move, they didn't move. But if God moved, they had to move. That's how they were to lead, follow. God would lead them. A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And how many knew this? Here's the sad part. Many would stay put even if the cloud did move. And I'm convinced. I am convinced of this. 100%. The Holy Spirit put this into me. Why a lot of people don't experience the glory of God. Because they're not moving with the cloud. They're not moving with the cloud. That's why churches don't move, experience the glory. That's why pastors don't experience the glory of God. That's why people in general don't experience the glory of God. Because let me tell you, this morning, we get comfortable. We get used to it, to a place that we're camping. We get into a routine. How many know it's easy to get into a routine? Amen? We get used to something. We get used to being in a certain routine. We know what we're doing. Why? And it becomes so easy to us. It don't bother us. It don't put, you know what you're going through. But what about when God breaks that routine? That's when you're going to experience the glory of God. Amen? I want to tell you that right now. It's what God was telling right there. As you move, you got to move. See, the sad thing is, many like to stay in the good old routine of everything. They don't want, there's the crickets. <laughs> I mean, listen, stat, we get stagnant. I guess that's time for me to get... <laughs> We get stagnant. We don't want to move forward with the glory cow. We refuse to move with the glory of God. Listen, Israel could have got their... If they didn't move, they would never see the glory of God. Think about it. You keep yourself in a place where the glory ain't. You keep yourself in a position where the glory ain't. Guess what? You ain't going to... And the glory's over here and you're here. Guess what you ain't getting? You ain't going to experience the glory of God. But they would have moved when the cloud moved. If the cloud wasn't moving, they would have stayed put. You see, what are you saying, preacher? As Jazz gets ready to get Marcy. Here's what I'm simply saying. If you're wanting to be used by God, you've got to be willing to move with God. Hello? If you're going to be used by God, you've got to be willing to move with God. You've got to be willing to move with God. If you're going to be used by God, you've got to be willing to be, be to move with God. Get that. 
One must follow the cloud. How many would say, I want to be used by God? You've got to be willing to move with God. I can tell you something. Pastor ain't that glimmers. How many want to be a pastor in here? I don't say I don't blame you. <laughs> Pastor's wonderful. I'll be honest with you. I like what one preacher. <laughs> I, better not, I better not go there. <laughs> I may get myself, but it's Christmas. I'm looking. <laughs> no, but listen, it's got headaches to it. It's not as glimmers people make it out. The greatest calling you can ever get is to be called by God, to be used by God. Let's just be honest. But I'm going to tell you something. Pastor, you don't know where your feet's going from one minute to the next. You don't. How many know that? You don't. Little did I know in 2015, I'd be in Houston Town, Pennsylvania by the end of the year. You got to be willing to go as God has you to go. I'll be. You got to be, no matter what you do for God, you got to be willing to move as God told you to go. Amen. You may not move cities, but you may have to do different things differently. Amen? But you've got to be willing to go as God told you to go. Do as God told you to do. That's where it talks being sensitive to the Spirit at. But let me tell you something. No matter what you do for God, no matter how big or how small, it's all important. It's all important. There's no... Little work, and there's no big work, if you will. All lines up for the glory of God. There's no small callings, what I'm trying to tell you, in the kingdom of God. All are important. And when there's a calling of God on your life, remember the biggest issue, heaven and hell. You don't do the calling of God to get rewarded on this earth. You do the calling of God to save people from heaven or hell. Hello. You see, Mary's calling was to bring forth Jesus. We all see the importance of that. But how many can see the importance of Joseph's calling as well? His calling was just as important. He had a part to play in it just as well. Think about it. Many don't speak on Joseph. But he had a role in caring, raising, providing, and taking care of this child and protecting this young child, Jesus of Nazareth. That's just as important. And raising him. Think about it. Point. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is what God called you to do carries eternal consequences to it. You see right here. Mary carrying Jesus had eternal consequences for the rest of us. Because that child was going to the cross. She was carrying her sacrifice. She was carrying her mediator. She was carrying her redeemer. She was carrying her healer. She was carrying her deliverer. She was carrying her salvation. She is carrying her baptizer in the Holy Ghost inside of her. We can go on and on with it. See, what you do for God, you're actually carrying Jesus. You're speaking for Jesus. You're doing it for Him this morning. You're giving the world Jesus. Amen? So whatever you do for the kingdom of God, it's important this morning. Don't be doing it just to be I want to get honored. Listen, you may not get honored. These things I do behind the scene, you'll never know what I do. I'm not looking for honor for the things I do behind the scenes. I'm doing it for the kingdom of God. Amen? I'm doing it for God's kingdom. I'm doing it for the work of God.
God's calling is important on every life. You want to do it for people's lives to be touched by God. Again, I want to tell you, no matter how big or how small that God wants to do something through you, remember how important it is in the kingdom of God. If you do it to be recognized, Marcy gets ready to play, and you can stand. But if you're wanting to do it to be recognized, I have no desire to be a famous preacher. I really don't. I just want to be win as many souls to the kingdom of God as I can get. And, but if you do it to be recognized or get celebrity status, there's your reward already. How many Jesus told about that? They that do it before man to get their reward, that's their reward already. But if you do it secretly, God will reward you openly. Amen? But if you're doing it just to be rewarded, if you're doing it just to be seen, if you're wanting to do it just to, for the name, recognition, and the title, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's the wrong motivation. But if you're doing it for the love of God, you're doing it because you don't want to see nobody perish. You're doing it because you love God. You're called by God. That's the right motivation. See, God's work is important. Whether it's seen or whether it's not seen. Whether it seems big or insignificant. Let me tell you something. There's no work in the kingdom of God that is insignificant. Amen. Just look at your toes. How many of you cut? Your big toe off, your little pokey toe, it's going to stub your balance right there. We, have, we work in this together. We're in this for the kingdom of God. Today, how many would say, God, I want to be used by you. God, I'm ready to leap out, ready to walk, be led by you. God, use me this morning. Open these altars up. God's got callings, but you've got to be willing to lead. You've got to be willing to... Walk with God this morning. You got to be willing to follow God this morning. You got to go as that cloud goes. We honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen.